interesting to see if this is the national lineup that we're seeing from these Bobcats. Yeah, Rhett, you alluded to it for the first time really all season as a one snapped off and there's a second. And yeah, look at that, Noah Holt right off the bat here, a shot far side. It's punched out in front by Verostic and then grabbing all the rebound, they deposit it back of the net. This is exactly the start you want if you're an Ohio Bobcats fan. Take another look at it here. This is what we talked about, shooting from everywhere. Noah Holt and then a quick snapper, nobody covering on the trailer. And just like that, it's one nothing over with the goal. Other key players missing. Yeah, no gamer tonight as well. And I think this is a situation where, you know, Kirk Handy just wants to come out of this game healthy. Finch showing the wheels and a score! Ryan Finch, oh my! Doesn't get any better than trying to get healthy off of that. A great job by Finch on the rush. We were talking about him now being inserted into the top line with Olsen and Kallendike, showcasing the speed. All right, we've always said like, hey, get down and close up net unless you have an opportunity. When you take it wide, strong on your stick side, then let it rip. He's able to do so right there and just beats Damon over the glove. He has the talent. They were high on him for a reason, and it takes some time to get used to the college game, and he's starting to get his feels now. On the rush for Ohio, they answer right back. Wow. And Matthew Over is having a night so far. Second goal this game, a turnover in the neutral zone. And don't blink, just like that. We talk about the talent of the Bobcats. Neutral zone turnover, great look coming here. He had top shelf lined up, and he nailed it right in the corner. Yeah, great job, as you said, from Over. Now, two goals in this game, 16th goal of the season. But that's what the thing is with Ohio. Brett, you touched on it earlier, a minute ago. They have so many game breakers, it takes time for them to gel, and now you're starting to see that. I mean, it's, hard. it's so hard, you know, you could really nitpick on LU right now saying, hey, why aren't they battling harder and they're making some mistakes, they don't seem sharp. Good look here for Ohio, quick shot, and a score! Man, what a snipe right there, Drake Albers almost had one in the first period, he gets one in the second, goal number nine on the season, nice move to the middle, goes top shelf stick side, a thing of beauty. And that all starts right, forcing the turnover just at the blue line when Liberty's in the offensive zone. And he comes away, he had a guy coming with him too on the trailer on a shortened 201, but calls his own number and yeah, just a beauty of a snipe. Through center, working to the far side, Turner will meet him. Just like that, the flames turned away. Once again, out of the box goes Cohen, and this could actually turn into an opportunity for the Bobcats. Pass to Holt, really good look, and he finds it, far down for a Holt. That was almost too easy for them. LU get caught on the change, and coming straight out of the box, excellent job by, I believe that was going to get the pass over to Holt, and he makes no mistake. That was, like I said, too easy for them. Yeah, this one coming from, you know, the whole way back, player coming off the bench all of a sudden it's really almost a three on one in that case yeah Holt, great placement down on one knee gets under it tucks that one in no chance for Bernstein on that play and you got to keep your eye on the guy coming out of the box he sets up a beautiful goal not exactly sure what either good centering pass Liberty still with possession third period so far the Flames pass and Albert lights the lamp for Liberty and that's what we were talking about earlier Get that traffic in front of the net, which you get that puck shot from the point. Instead of doing high to low, you do low to high. And if you have traffic there, you're going to be able to create havoc and cluster Damon and put one in the back of the net. And that's what we just see from Liberty just now. I said last weekend against Niagara, I'd love to see it. just Albers post up in front of the net. Yeah. You see it right there. This is a heads up play by Bogenholm. This is on the ice. He drew three defenders high, just sends it on goal, gets the rebound like we were speaking of, and Albers, great finish. It's so simple, that's the thing. You can make hockey a really complicated game, but in that situation, Bogenholm uses his speed, his greatest asset, to create opportunity for him, and the Flames capitalize. Pile up behind Damon. Four seconds left, Ohio. Will finally get the monkey off their back. They're able to unseat the Flames. Come into the LIC, take the last matchup here in Lynchburg this season. 
Well, if you're Coach Marone, you're happy with what your team saw. You saw from your team, that is, and happy to come away with your star players still intact. Obviously, a couple of injuries, perhaps. Hopefully, those players are okay as they head on to St. Louis. If you're a Liberty, I think you like your pushback in the third period. Yes, this game was inconsistent, but at the same time, You've seen what your veterans have been able to do in playoff hockey over the past few years. You know they can replicate it. And again, the, the players are there for success at the Murdoch Cup. Certainly are, and for Ohio, it's good to finally get your full strength team back and get it against top 10 competition. They're gonna look for more success for them come Nationals time. So for Rep McGinn, Pat Strawn, Allison Mullet, and our entire crew, I'm Connor Young saying so long from Lynchburg, Virginia, where the final score, four to two Ohio. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.